death of a man who literally changed the way we live our lives every day. Steve Jobs, the visionary founder and leader of Apple Computer, has died at the age of 56. A giant in business, technology, and entertainment, Steve Jobs had been battling pancreatic cancer for eight years. His place in history was assured when he helped invent the personal computer, but that was only the beginning. Here is ABC's Bill Weir. Before he put a virtual world at her fingertips. And we call it the iPad. Before he turned household tools into objects of desire. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. Before he changed the way we are entertained. And you can watch it on your iPod. A 20-year-old Steve Jobs launched a revolution from his parents' garage. With buddy Steve Wozniak, they set out to move the power of the computer from the laboratory to your lap. The penalty for failure uh, for going and trying to start a company in this valley is non-existent. And his brimming confidence was validated when they launched the Macintosh. We worked hard, and in 10 years, Apple had grown from just the two of us in a garage into a $2 billion company with over 4,000 employees. But the 80s brought a power struggle with Apple's board, and Jobs was soon fired from the company he founded. And so at 30, I was out, and very publicly out. What had been the focus of my entire adult life was gone, and it was devastating. But he did not wallow, and in his 30s, he met his wife, started another computer company called Next, and took over Pixar, changing animation forever. My name is Woody, and this is Andy's room. In 96, Apple bought Next, and soon Jobs was back in charge, leading a digital renaissance. After his return, Apple stock soared more than 7,000%, turning that garage startup into one of the most valuable companies in history. And in a valley of geniuses, his myth grew into Thomas Edison meets Willy Wonker proportions, building anticipation for invention shrouded in secrecy. Are you using that currently as your phone? I haven't been able to because I can't take it out in public. While keeping his life fiercely under wraps, not even his board knew of his pancreatic cancer. I just wanted to mention this. <laughs> and he didn't reveal he'd had a liver transplant until after the procedure. I now have the liver of a mid-twenties person who died in a car crash. Through life, while his body grew frail, that mind, that drive, never quit. A standing ovation welcomed his surprise appearance at the spring launch of the iPad 2. But then came this letter in August. I've always said that if there ever came a day when I could no longer meet my duties, I would be the first to let you know, he wrote. Unfortunately, that day has come. Here was a man who'd peered into the future, seeing how we'd work and play 20 years before we'd ever hold the proof. Everything will be portable. People want large color screens that they can put photographs on. People want motion video. And when the body began to fail, he was driven anew by the clock and that burning need to build something great. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. A titan of American business. Steve Jobs was just 56 years old. He leaves behind a wife and four children. And just minutes ago, Apple's board of directors issued a statement saying, in part, Steve's brilliance, passion, and energy were the source of countless innovations that enrich and improve all of our lives. The world is immeasurably better because of Steve. We're going to have much more on the life and impact of this remarkable American, Steve Jobs, on a special edition of Nightline. And you can get the latest anytime at ABC, ABCnews.com. I'm Terry Moran in New York.